Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over floating block elements in order to make web page layouts. So in order to make all kinds of layouts, whether they be simple or complicated, you really want to have a strong understanding and ability to move blocks around on your page. So I've got a generic web page set up. There's nothing really too tricky in it. I've got a header and I've got about five or six um, block elements. In this case, they're generic divs. They all share the same class, but they, I did give them unique IDs just so I can change a few things here and there. And what I'd like you to start to practice with is just make divs and make different layouts. For instance, you could look at something like Apple's website. Um, I like using Apple as a demo a lot because um, it's good use of simplicity, yet very obviously very popular, and it's a good looking site. But it's very, very simple. They've got a big parent container, uh, maybe a header up here that contains a nav, of course, big background image. And then we've got these clear and obvious blocks just kind of structured here. So you got this big block up here that contains a few pieces of content. You got these four equal size blocks that contain um, in background images basically with some promotion content and then a footer area. So super simple page. And I'd like you to keep that in mind when you're making your web pages. They do not need to be complicated to be good. Um, go for content. There's a expression content is king. So keep that in mind. So on our page, um, I really shouldn't have to mess around too much with the HTML in order to demonstrate here, but I would like to just experiment with floating blocks side by side. So the first thing I'll do, and in fact, it's probably a good practice here. Let me go ahead and create a container. So I've got an opening div container at the top of my page. And of course, at the bottom of my page, I'll close that off. And I'll go ahead and end of parent container. So I'll go ahead and mark this as my main container. And then I can format that along with my other blocks. And so for my CSS, container, what are five picks solid black, width, let's just do 600 pixels, height, 500 pixels, margin 0px auto. And of course that is the big trick for centering a block element right there. Margin zero picks auto. Basically zero picks top top and bottom margin, automatic margins left and right. So just that little change there, I can head back over to this, refresh, and now we've got that centered container. So that's the start of how easy it is to control a block. And of course our parent container is our main block element. It kind of sets the boundaries of our page. And based on what I've typed so far, you can tell that I'm going for a single column well, I shouldn't say single column, it could still change, but it's definitely a fixed width layout. So if I adjust this width to 900 pixels, then I will instantly have a wider web page, still fixed though, at a certain number of pixels. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and format all of my blocks equally, and they're a class, so I can just do dot block as my selector, that's a class selector. And I'll go ahead and set all of their widths to 200 pixels, all of their heights to 200 pixels, borders 3 picks solid red, background color, that's a light shade of yellow. And now we can start to visualize where these blocks are. Let me knock them down a bit in size to 100 by 100. And you can see that they're all smaller now. So the default nature of a div is to be one on top of the other and if I hadn't set the width let's just take this width out for a moment if you don't set the width for those divs or any block element for that matter they will be as wide as they can be they're naturally going to want to stretch to the width of their parent container in this case it is literally my container div so if you don't want a div or any block element to be as wide as it can be, then go ahead and set the width to what you would like. Just pop that back in. There we go. And to get all of these side by side, I can simply float them all to the left. Every div is going to float to the left, so now they're side by side. And if I want spacing in there, well, then I can simply add a little bit of margin maybe uh, five pixels all around. 
and now they're spaced out. So you have a lot of control just by setting widths and floats. And then you start to challenge yourself. Well, what kind of layout do I want? I see over in the Apple website, they, um, their four divs, let's call them, they're equally as wide as this page. Well, that's easy enough because it's basic math. Uh, Apple is using a fixed width layout. If I stretch their page out, you can't really see it on the right edge, but you can see over here, they just add white space to the left and to the right. So they have a fixed width, and we'll call it a one column layout, even though they have these four blocks side by side. And you can do the same thing with just a little bit of basic math, especially if you've got something like your parent container is 1000 pixels, and then your blocks can simply be 250 pixels. Let me get rid of a couple of them. Now this isn't going to work out exactly right because I do have some margin and I also have some borders in there to contend with. But you can start to see the ideas. Oh, okay, that's, that's going to affect things. You could also experiment with various widths, right? So instead of 250, perhaps 25%. We're still going to have margins and borders to deal with. But now we could start to get into a flexible web page layout.